Can fasting help prevent COVID-19? Interesting new research suggests that it can play a huge role. And I'm going to cover it, and it's coming right up. There are many reasons to think that fasting might improve outcomes for COVID-19. First, it's been very clear that obesity is a huge risk factor in COVID deaths and hospitalizations. The Center for Disease Control notes that obesity increases the risk of both severe disease and hospitalization, and especially for those under the age of 65. Obesity decreases the lung capacity and makes it harder for you to breathe, so when you get a lung infection, it can take a more severe toll. And models suggest that 30.2% of the risk of hospitalization is attributable directly to obesity. So fasting can play a huge role in reducing obesity, but it might be more than that. During ancient times, fasting was considered to boost the response to infection. And it's likely due, although they didn't know it at the time, to counter-regulatory hormones. When you don't eat, insulin goes down, but other hormones go up. And one of the things that go up is the activation of the sympathetic tone and noradrenaline, which increases the blood pressure. A lot of times in infection, your blood pressure goes down, so it's important to be able to boost it. And it's one of the things that we give people in the intensive care unit to support them through these infections. Second, as you don't eat, your body shifts its metabolism from glucose to fats. And as glucose goes down, there's less glucose for other pathogens to eat. Bacteria and those sorts really get by on glucose, but aren't able to metabolize fats as easily, whereas our cells have the ability to use both glucose and fats. So when you get a bacterial infection, locking away that glucose is very important. Third, during inflammation, what damages the body is not just the infectious agent, the bacteria or the virus, but the body's overreaction in some cases to it. And the ramping up of the immune system releases all these inflammatory conditions, and it's those inflama inflammatory cascades that can actually damage us. So during fasting, the hormone cortisol goes up, and this helps control that inflammatory cascade. And it's very similar to the drug prednisone or dexamethasone, which is precisely the drug we give people in COVID-19 and sometimes in other severe infections. Also, fasting increases autophagy, and autophagy is one of the ways that the body has to clear out viruses. Viruses affect the cells, and during autophagy, those cells get targeted for destruction. The ancient Greeks had observed that when animals and humans get sick with infections, they usually spontaneously stop eating and deduced that this so-called fasting instinct was nature's way of enhancing our host responses. So in all those ways, fasting might be very useful for the body to fight infection and decrease the damaging inflammation that sometimes comes along with it. But more specific to COVID, it's found that when the body has fasted, free fatty acids go up and one of those fatty acids is linoleic acid. The COVID virus has a domain that binds this linoleic acid in its pockets, and after it binds, it decreases the affinity of the spike protein for ACE2. Thus, the way that the COVID virus attaches to our cells might be influenced by the fasting, and it might be less infectious or even better. And repeated fasting is known to boost certain factors like galactin-3 that improve host immunity and decrease inflammation. But it wasn't known until just recently whether or not this really played a role in protecting people from COVID. 
This study was just published in 2022, and it was titled Association of Periodic Fasting with Lower Severity of COVID-19 Outcomes in the SARS-CoV-2 Pre-Vaccine Era. In this study, they took patients who were in a hospital registry in Utah, there was 5,795 patients in the general population, and about 27 to 36 percent of those patients reported that they periodically fast on a regular basis and most of these were for religious purposes so they've been doing it for a very long time and they had completed this survey to see how long they were fasting for and how often they do they were considered regular if they fasted for more than five years and when they looked at this registry between the periods of March 2020 to February 2021, they looked to see who tested positive for COVID-19. And they, what they found was that they had 205 patients in this registry. 73 of them were fasting regularly, and 132 of those patients were not regular fasters, and they compared those two groups. When they divided those patients, what they found was a very marked difference in outcome. 11% of those fasters required hospitalization or death versus 28.8%, even after they adjusted for all the other variables that they could find. That is, there was less than half of the serious problems with COVID. There was no protective benefit in terms of getting the COVID. Those fasters got COVID just as often as the non-fasters, but when they got it, it seemed to be much less protective and this was in conjunction with what we thought about fasting which is that it had all these helpful benefits in terms of viral clearance in terms of uh, protection uh, in terms of tamping down the runaway immune system and inflammation that sometimes happens afterwards when they looked at the endpoints separately that is death or hospitalization both of them were statistically significant. And this was true whether it was for older patients or younger patients and in all different ethnic groups, you could find this protective benefit. So what we find here is that there is clear evidence, even though it's observational, that the practice of routine fasting has not only a lot of scientific reasons why it would work, but also that there is data here that suggests that in fact the effect is very very powerful not only for um, lesser levels of COVID that is hospitalizations but even all the way up to death. So for a practice that's been used for thousands of years that's been considered a fasting instinct when you're sick that has been shown to promote autophagy which might be important for clearance of viruses Here's a simple and effective thing that you can do that might in fact protect you. Thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you next week.